54 of the message we've been working on. We started, I'll, I'll do a little recap just tonight, just to get, keep you up to speed since it's been a couple weeks since we did that, but that thou wouldest come down. We'll see that phrase, and it's a, like a series kind of preaching here. Isaiah 64, verse 1, y'all there say amen? Amen. Man, yeah, you guys are ready tonight. Good, okay. Verse 1 says, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down. That the mountains might flow down at thy presence as when the melting fire burneth. The fire causeth the waters to boil. Amazing. To make thy name known to thine adversaries that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst tr terrible things which we look not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear neither Hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for them that waiteth for him? Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned, and, and those is continuance, and we shall be saved. For we are all as an unclean thing, and our, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art potter, and we are all the work of thy hand. Our, our great Heavenly Father, we thank you as we bow into your presence today. I thank you for the word of God, and I need you tonight. I pray for your power and your unction. I pray that your presence would be among us, that thou wouldest come down, as it says. You would rend the heavens. Oh, what a day that would be to come and see uh, the God of heaven. Rend the heavens and come down and meet with us. What an awesome night it would be if you just do that tonight. God, I pray that you give us wisdom through your scriptures. Give us understanding. I pray, oh God, that you'd speak to a heart. God, in these last days, my, I'm so burdened for the lost souls of men. As there may be some in the midst of us today that does not know Jesus truly and sincerely, they are on their way to a devil's hell if they would die tonight. Oh, the burden that lies upon my heart for those people. I pray, oh God, that you would speak to that heart, that you would break that hard heart, that you would melt a cold heart tonight. I pray, oh God, that the attention of your people would be upon thee. I pray, oh Lord God, that you would teach us. The Holy Spirit has to be a part of this, oh God, to do anything and to, to learn anything tonight. So I pray that the Spirit of God be the only Spirit in this place. God, would you grab a hold of our minds and our hearts? Would you give it, uh, allow us to be soil that would receive the seed and that the devil would have no place in this room? Lord, I love you and I thank you for the Word of God. Again, that you would use it tonight to speak to your people, that we would understand not only that thou wouldest come down, but what you give us, your power when you do. We love you and we thank you in Christ's holy name. Amen and amen. You can see the thank you standing. So we have laid the groundwork a couple weeks ago that that would have come down. So the coming down of Almighty God. We looked last week or a couple weeks ago how that uh, when he comes down that sometimes he doesn't bring his attributes. We know that he is omnipresent. That God is everywhere all at once. He is not only in every seat and in every part of this room, but he's in your mind. He knows what you think, and uh, there isn't a, a thought, O oh Lord, but you know us, and thou knowest it all together, the Bible says. But yet, when he comes down, we know this, that he doesn't always bring his attributes with him. And as we kind of looked at last week, you can go on our YouTube page and, and go listen, I do not have time to preach that over again, but uh, the things that will happen, uh, the thermometer to get a glimpse of his presence, and we looked at a couple of these things, we looked at uh, the renovation, when God comes down, he renovates some things, he rescues the sinner. Uh, there's a restraining. There's a recompense. There's redemption. There's a receiving. There's revival that happens in people, man. Uh, just when God comes down, something happens. Amen. In other words, we look at all that. We look at all these things, and be like, "What does all that stuff mean?" We're going to listen to it again. But when He comes down, there's something happens. Just the same as when He comes inside of you, something happens. Listen, you will not stay the same if the God of Heaven comes inside you. You won't stay the same. You won't be the same. There'll be different things within you that you do, that the way you act, uh, what you're a part of. Yes, we have a, a sin nature that draws us. And that conversation, I'll keep going back to it today because it was just an amazing act of God. As, as 
I, I started to talk to this person about uh, camp and just different things. They said, I just don't want to go to church. And I said, That's, that doesn't surprise me because you still have this flesh that is a part of you. You still have this body. You still have the brain that wants to think evil thoughts. And you have to say no to that thing if you're ever going to let the Spirit of God do something within you. And that it's still in there. I can see it coming out of you. And so there, don't, hey, don't get discouraged because there's a fight. Be encouraged because there is a fight. Because if there was no fight, then that means the Spirit of God doesn't dwell within you. And the fact that you want to fight, that there is a fight, that you see that there's this uh, something inside you saying, hey, you need to be a part of this stuff and you don't want to, there's a fight there. Be encouraged with that. It's not a discouragement, be encouraged. But when God comes down, there's something happens. I got a rabbit trail there. When it, hey, he'll do stuff, man. When he comes down, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing act. We can see in our verses, look at verse number one. He said that thou wouldest rend the heavens. I don't know about you, but if I look up in the sky, I don't know what it would look like if the heavens got rended. I don't know. And you say, that's not a word. I just made it up. Yes, it is. It's rainy. I don't know if it would be like a big rip in the sky. I don't know what that would be. But guess what? The earth itself would change when God becomes a part of it. When there's, God moves, there's some things that happen when he moves. Look at the verse. It says, uh, the rain of heavens, if thou would come down, the mountains might flow down at thy presence. I don't know about you, but rock's pretty hard. And for me to see rock melt and start to flow like water, that's amazing. Because when God comes down, things happen. Things change. That we think that uh, what would change, verse number, uh, what is it, verse number three? Without us terrible things which we looked up for. That when God comes down, when God is a part of something, he will move in such a way that we wouldn't even expect it. I have seen people give their hearts and life to Christ in moments I never thought they would give their heart and life to Christ. I'm sitting in this living room of this teenager today. I never thought anything, but this is what I prayed. I kid you not. I was, in, I was, I was around that area. I was, I was visiting someone. It was just right around the corner. I said, man, Lord, she's on my heart, but I'm preaching about the power of God tonight, and I need your power. I can't do it, and I've been, I've been doing stuff in the, in the, in the, the, uh, the art of the flesh. I've been doing, trying to do it by my own power so many years. I need you to be a part of something. I need your power. And I entered in and sat down. We started talking and, and just started to, the, the presence of God. I can't explain it, but the presence of God, when, when that happens, something mighty happens within there. He rends the heavens. There's some things that go on when the presence of God is a part of these things. It's amazing. Amen. Amen. And so we looked at that. And so then, but, but we realized this too. Y'all ready? God's timing isn't ours. So it's not like we say, okay, God, we're ready for your presence. Rub the magic bottle and the genie, and you pop out and you start doing things. That's not the way God works. God's timing is not our own. But you know what I found out this? is as we studied last week, again, I can't go through it all, but I want to set it up so that there's nothing hindering God from coming down. I want to set it up, and I want my life to be clear. I want my, my, my heart to be clear that when God wants to come down, when he desires to come down, because listen to me, listen to me, we need God. You need God. You may not think you need God. You want to dismiss God. You want to say, well, all this stuff about God, I don't need him in my life. Hey, you need God. And there may be a time come that you realize you need God. I don't know what God's going to do, but I know this. Every cancer patient that's ever walked the earth, they may not have believed in God. And as soon as that C word came up in their life, all of a sudden, God was real. Because God was the only one that could do anything about their situation at that point. And right now, as teenagers or adults, we may think, we got everything under control. We don't really need God. I don't need to pray that much. I don't need to read my Bible that much. But the moment God strips our lives of things and we realize he's in control and we're not, all of a sudden, oh, we need God now. Because we need God. And I want you to realize this before it gets to that point in your life. I want you to realize this as he gave this realization to me that I need him whether things are good. I need him whether things are bad. I need God consistently all the time. And so do you. So do you. We need him. And I want him to come down. That thou would have the heavens. And I, I, we look for it at camp. That's when God can move. Because you guys get out of your element. You get away from the sin. You put the stuff down. You put your phones down. You put your video games down. And you come. And you try to be a part of these things. And you allow God to do something in your life. Away from the consistency of your life. And that's where we expect it. But I expect it every Wednesday. I expect it every Sunday. I want to see a great move of God and say, God, you can do this. It doesn't need to take a week. We can be like that now. I wanted to be a part of that. I didn't mean to spend all this time on this, but this is what 
Oh, man, I told you all to put your seatbelts on. I, it's been a couple weeks. I've had this stored up for two weeks. It has been boiling up in me right now, and it's coming out. So we need him. So I want to set the deck. I want to stack the deck. That we, we look through the Bible and some of the things that, that happened. And so we're, if you remember this, your desire was true. We, this is a couple weeks ago. But your desire to see God has to be true. Your desire to need God has to be true. Uh, you have to honor his temple. You see that in, as we looked at uh, when Solomon dedicated the temple, they were honoring God's temple. When you come into the church house and you honor his temple, there's something about that that God says. I was talking to this person. They said, I said, when's the last time you heard the voice of God? I ain't heard the voice of God. I started weeping again, just crying all over the place. And, and, and I, said, I, I said, when's the last time? I ain't heard the voice of God. Some of you have never heard the voice of God, and that's sad. No wonder you're in a hopeless, and our world's in a hopeless situation right now. They can't hear the mighty voice of God. The one that will, the only thing that will give you hope. Everything that you place your hope in in this world fails at some point because it'll die. It'll go away. It'll no longer be in existence. But the God that I know, the God of Scripture, He is always in existence. He never dies. He said He has an endless priesthood because He ever liveth to make intercession for us. That's why there's hope in Him. Because he, your mom and dad, you call them for advice, but they may not be there. You may have a friend that you can rely on and lean into, that you can text, that you can say, look, I need help in this situation. They may be there, but there may be times they're not. But we have a God who's always there. And I, his voice is always ready. And I talked to her, I said, he wants to talk to you, but you know where I know he says he will talk to you is in his house. That's where I know he'll talk to you is in his house. So when you get in his house, there's honor to it. Man, it sets up that God will come down. Not only that, but your brokenness. Remember, brokenness is a treasure. You come to God broken, needing fixed. Oh, God likes to move in. It's not. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a matter of uh, the brokenness. It, we, we can't fake that. But you have to have a brokenness about you. Why would God come down? If you look at the the seven things that I listed, every time that uh, God came down in Scripture, and we say that there was something that needed fixed. In the beginning was. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness is upon the face of the deep. Something he fixed. So what God do? He came down. Babylon. You go through all those things. Something needs fixed, and brokenness has to be uh, a treasure. And then your expectation has to be trash. Remember that? We have an expectation of what God will do. If God came down, watch this. If God came down in this room, just in this room, now I believe he can come down, he can fill this whole place up, but the kids... Uh, getting saved, and there'll be adults up there just going crazy. I, I believe he could do that. And I don't think people are going to start jumping up, running down the aisle, screaming and spitting. I don't think that, I mean, it'd be good, but I don't think that's going to happen. But if he come down right now, I, we have in our minds, listen to me now, we have in our minds, we think this and this and this will happen. That That's how I know the presence of God is there. you got to trash your expectation. We can't expect God to do a certain thing a certain way. Yes, I've seen mighty moves of God, but he may not move that way. I don't know what he'll do if he comes down. So instead, I just say, God, would you come down? And when he comes down, you may say, well, how do I know he'll come down? Oh, you'll know when you're in the presence of Almighty God. Come on now. You'll know when you're in his presence. So I set it up. So we need to show, we need him to show up, don't we? Hey, you need him to show up in your family. Come on now. You need him to show up at your school. You need to show up at, at your work. You need him to show up in your personal life. We need him to show up. And this is what the thought came to me. We, I don't just want to read about it. I want to experience it myself. Hey, I don't want to see it. I don't just want to see God. I want to experience it myself. When I sit in pews at churches, and I start to see people get weeping, and I start to see people raising their hand, I start seeing people move, and they're at the altar before the altar call. Man, I've been preaching before. People come down the altar before I've ever done preaching. That happens at church camp all the time, or, or different places. When I start to see that, I said, man, God's moving. But I just don't want to see it. I want to experience it myself. And that's what we're trying to get to. That's what we're trying to understand, that that one has come down. So remember this, when his presence is, is among us, he doesn't always bring, I already said this, his attributes with him. But, man, I sure do want to see some things. And when he comes down, this is, this is the thought. When he comes down... His power is one of the things that he'll bring with him. Now, it, his power is so important. And, and this is what I understood. And I got this. I didn't get this last week. I wouldn't have preached this last week. But I got this this week. 
His power is so important. Go to Acts chapter number 1. Go to your New Testament. I'm going to show you this. I'm not going to spend long on this because this ain't even the message yet. But I want you to see how important. Our preacher said something this. Said something like this to me the other day. He goes, I, can't, I don't even want to think about the messages that I have preached in my ministry by the flesh. He said that I didn't have any power of God on me. That I preached it simply in my flesh. He said something like that. It wasn't exact. But he said, I, I know there's been times that I've got up and I've just ran through the motions. I didn't have the power of God. He said, I, I don't even want to think about that. And I, I got to thinking about this that this week and I thought, my goodness, hey, we need him. I already said that. I preached that. Y'all understand that we need him. But you want to know what you all need and what I need? You need his power. You need his power. You say, well, do I really need his power? I mean, I'm doing just fine. Are you doing just fine? I, 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 I sit across from this from this from this teenager, and I and I'm sitting, and I, and I was just looking. I'm sorry, I'm gonna start weeping if I'm watching. Okay, so I'm sitting here and I'm I'm looking at her, and I'm just talking to her, and I'm I'm just I'm I'm, I'm, I'm being I'm just like, hey, I, I just want you to know that, and I pray for you, and and uh, man, I want you to hear God, and she just starts weeping, and I'm like. I said, what's going on right now? <laughs> I'm like, what's going on right now? Because I don't know what you're, you're crying. You're making me cry. So I got to know what's going on because I got to know what I'm crying about. <laughs> like, ah, I just don't cry for no reason. So I mean, and, and you shouldn't explain it. I couldn't explain it. I said, the power of God, it's going on right now. And 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 I need that and, and you need that. We, we all mess. I said, come on now, we all mess. Can I get a witness? We were a mess. What gets us out of this mess? Uh, the power of God. We need it. It's not something we can say, well, maybe later in my life I'll get the power of God in my life. You and I need it daily. Watch how important this is. Acts chapter 1, y'all there say amen. amen. Verse 4. It says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them, it's talking about Jesus, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, watch what he says, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. And what is that promise? It was the power of the Holy Ghost that will come upon them. Now, I want you to grasp a hold of this. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only thing that will keep people out of the pits of hell. It is the only thing, catch this, it is the only thing that will keep people from burning in torment for the eternity. It's the only thing that will do that. It's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, watch this. Jesus told them, I want you to wait until you receive power from me before you go out and do that. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jesus. There's people dying. There's people could die and go to hell. And you want me to wait? He says, yes, because my power is important. And without my power, this gospel thing don't get done. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, my goodness, how many times have I preached and without the power of God upon me to bring sinners to repentance, to bring someone to a saving knowledge of Jesus, that I just preached in the flesh, the power of God wasn't on the place, and they went home unconverted, and they didn't know Jesus, and they never got a hold of Jesus, and they would still die and go to hell. My mind went to that, because the power of God is important. If you're ever going to witness for Him effectively, if you're ever going to be a Christian effectively for Him, if you're ever going to do something for Jesus, you have to, have to have the power of God on your life. That's how important it was. John chapter 15, verse 5, you write this down, is it on that paper. Jesus said this, without me, you can do nothing. That's what he says. Without me, you can do nothing. Wait a minute. I can do a lot of things, right? Without God. No, 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 no. He says, without my power, there's nothing really going to come out of your life worth anything. Because without me, you can do nothing. Do you all see in this teenager, adults? Do you see in this? We need his power. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, right? What is that? The power of God. See, we need his power in my in our lives. And, and this, this whole thought that, that that would just win the heavens and that would just come down. Why does he need to come down? Because we need him. But when he comes down, I want him to bring his power with him. That we can be endued with the power. That we can be filled with his power. That we can do something for him in his power and not just in ours. Because ours isn't worth really much anything. And so this power of God that's resting on our life, man. You need it. I need it. I don't know if you're getting this, but I'm telling you, we need his power. And so look at his power tonight. Number one, I want you to write this down. 
If you're taking notes or if you got that paper, just write this in a blank. Look at the potential of power. The power of God. I just want you to understand this. You hear me tonight? Is God powerful or how powerful is God? His power uh, is an example of how we can see something but not experience it personally. So when we look at his power, when we uh, describe his power, we can see that what we can tap into, in other words, that our personal experience of God, when I say the potential of power, this is what we're asking God to give us, is a portion of his power. Look at this. So, uh, Isaiah chapter 64, go back there. Go Isaiah chapter 64. <clears throat> we can see this power of God, but not experience it personally. This is what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't just want to see this stuff. I want to see a families getting saved because teenagers get on fire, and they have power on their life, and yet I'm left going, where's the power of my life? Oh, no, no, no. When there, God comes down, when he rends the heavens, when that that would have that that come down, when he comes down and he brings his power with him, hey, he doesn't, listen, he doesn't pick and choose people. I want to give you power and you power and you power. The rest of you, ooh, I'm sorry, I'm just coming down to give them. No, no, no. The people that receive it, that when he comes down and we get the, and his power on our life for those that have prepared, those that say, that's me, I'm going to prepare myself, my desire's going to be right, I'm going to honor his temple, I'm, not, I'm going to get rid of these things, that he wants to give it to all. And watch his potential. Isaiah chapter 64, I kind of read through this uh, real quick, I'm too busy preaching, I don't have turn in here. To Isaiah 64, he would have rent the heavens. You see that? That the mountains may flow down at thy presence. Watch this, verse 2. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil. Unbelievable. It says in verse number 3, or verse uh, uh, 2, I'm sorry, to make thy name known uh, to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. The nations will tremble when God comes down. Yeah, because he's powerful. Uh, all this talk in Russia and Ukraine and nuclear war, ah, monkeypox, ah, everybody's trying to, to shake up and fear. Why? I don't understand it, but I know this because fear is a motivator. When God comes down, because he's so powerful, it'll make the nations tremble. These are the things that we see in our world, man, they won't hold a candle to what God will do when he will come down. So we need his power. Isaiah chapter number 40, go turn over just a couple pages, look at this. Isaiah chapter number 40. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, verse 28. Remember, I'm looking at the potential. Look, there's a God who wants to give us power, and it's not like he's lacking in it. And when, look, look, when he wants to give us his power, it's not like he's, he, it's him coming out of us. It's him dwelling within us and uh, using his power. You ever witness to someone? You ever do something? You'd be like, man, that was awesome. That was so cool. You read through your Bible and it comes alive to you. That's the power of God. That's not something you conjured up in your head when you sit in services and all of a sudden God's starting to move you and speak to you and you're like, man, that was just amazing. I don't know what, what, what was that? That was the power of God. That that was in the heavens. You'd come down. There's the power of God. But look at this. We need his power. Look at verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. He says, Hast thou not known? The hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? This is the power that we can tap into. This is the power that you and I can have. It says there's a God who never faints. Watch this. Neither is weary. <laughs> there's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have their might. He increases strength. <laughs> it says and to those that don't have any, here you go. I got plenty of it. Watch verse 31. Uh, verse 30, even the youth shall faint be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. Now, I'm no spring chicken. Thank you for not saying amen. But I'm telling you this. I can do as much strength training. I can try to build. I can try to do things to make my body work, to, to last longer. But there'll be a day I have to rest. Yesterday was one of those days. I, I'm trying to, to work my lower back because my lower back is my weakest part of my body. I've always had problems with it. I'm trying to work it. I'm trying to, my hips and, and different things, trying to put, put us all together and trying to strengthen that up. Yesterday I got up, I'm limping again. I'm like, what is wrong with me? And I'm like, oh man, you know, and I'm like, you know, the kids are running, I'm like, that's good, man. And, they, and then they go to the other room, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, but I am weak and I get faint. He said, even the use, the, the use, that's why verse 30, the use shall faint. The strongest among you will get tired. Isn't that right? That's what God's trying to get to us. You guys are the youths. The strongest. The ones that can stay up the latest. 
and you can get up after two hours of sleep and keep going. I used to be able to do that. Not happening no more, friend. No, no, no. The use among you. He said, you're going to faint one day. And watch this. And you know the verse. The other fail. But they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. He shall mount, They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, how in the world can you say, I'm weary, that I'm a youth and I'm weary. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a youth and I want to faint. And then turn around and say, but there'll be times you won't be faint. That you wait on the Lord and he'll give you strength because you're not going by your power. It's by his. Amen. You see that we need him. There's not one of us who would like more power or strength. Everyone needs power. The inability to do things shows us that we need the man. Listen, because we can't do everything, hey, you can't do everything. And because we can't do everything, we need the manifestation of God's power in us. We need him to come down. The potential of God's powers in verse 12. Look at this. Who have measured the water in the hollow of his hand and meted out the heavens with the span. The universe that we see, the God that will give us his power, he measures the universe with his hand. He measures the waters that you and I can't even swim across in the palm of his hand. Verse 12, look at it. He's weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Are you kidding me? He you think Mount Everest and you think these mountains that we see, he'll pick them up and he'll put them on a scale and weigh them like they're marbles to us. This is the God. Look at verse number 13. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord or who being his counselor had taught him? You're not going to teach God anything. Verse 14. But with whom he took counsel and who instructed him and taught him the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. You understand this? There's nothing God can learn. He knows it all. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of the bucket. I know this. This whole Ukraine. I, I, don't, I don't watch it. I don't look at it. I, I just know it's still going on because people tell me. But to God, this is nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. All this. Well, what about Russia? Don't they have nukes? And God says, they're dropping the bucket to me. I've got more power than that. Verse 15. They are counted as the small dust of the balance. Now, I want you all to get this. And I'm preaching this thing way too long, but it's just way too long. So if you got a balance, and you take a weight, and you put it in the balance, and you're trying to balance these things out, none of us go, ah, there's dust. <laughs> I can't have that weight there because that'll unbalance things. You ain't doing that because dust is nothing. He said the nations, the things that we fear, the things that we watch and tremble at, the things that we think, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? He says God didn't even look at that as anything. That when it's in the balance, it's dust to him. He's got some power. You see, all this stuff, China, oh, China, poor China, God it's a drop in the bucket to him. It's dust to him. He taketh up, look, 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 look. He says, behold, he taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. There's nothing to him and his power. Man, he's got some potential. Right? The potential of power. Uh, no need to move his hand. He can speak. Psalm uh, 29, verse 4. You can write that down, or I think I got it right on there. He don't even need to move his hand to do things. He can speak, and he can do things. You all hear this? I know you get this one out there, but there's some potential and there's some power in, in God, the God of heaven. Yeah. He doesn't need to move his hand. He doesn't need to say, I need this stuff out of my way. He just speaks it and things happen. Boy, that's power. His potential is unlimited in might, but it's also unlimited in quantity. He can't run out of it. He doesn't get weary. See, that without him even speaking, just his very presence causes things to change as we already look. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 says his word is quick and it's powerful. Hey, that's why you won't read it. Oh, come on now. That's why you won't read it. Why can we pick up any other book in the world and read it, but yet it takes, uh, it, it takes an army sometimes to get us to pick this book up and read it outside of church? What's the big deal about the book? Because it's quick, it's powerful. There's some power in this thing. We get a hold of it, we read it, it changes us. 
That's why some of us, will, will we won't read it. We won't listen to the preaching of it. We'll get distracted. We'll pull away from it. We'll say, I don't want to hear this. Why? Because there's power in it. There's power, man. It's the potential power. That's the God. And he says this, I'd like to give it to you. I'd like your life to be filled with it. This is the potential of power. Number two, write this down. Look at the problems of the power. Now, you say, all this power, what in the world could be some problems? Well, why we need his power? Why do we need his power? This is a, look, look, A underneath this, we need his power because of the enemy. Because the enemy, hey, catch this. What's the problem with power? The problem is that we have an enemy. And, and 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Oh, man, I do not have time to do all this. But let me quote this for you. You don't have to turn there. 2 Peter chapter uh, 2, verse 11 says this. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might. Do you realize this? That they're angels in heaven that are more powerful than you and me. That in one night, listen to this, in one night, one night, one angel wiped out 85,000 people. One afternoon, I just got done reading it, in, uh, in uh, uh, Samuel, in one afternoon, he wiped out 70,000 people, one angel. One angel. Do you think there's some power behind that? But as powerful as angels are, listen to me, as powerful as angels are, there's a guy named the devil or Satan, that old serpent. He is a, in a cherubim that covered the Michael, the archangel, a chief angel, wouldn't even go against him. But said, the Lord rebuked thee. Why? Because he's powerful. Our enemy is powerful. Uh, Luke chapter 22, verse uh, 53 says, that is the power of darkness. 1 Peter chapter 5, 8 says, he's after you as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, I want you to get grasp a hold of this. You have an enemy that's more powerful than the angels who killed 85,000 people one night, and they're more powerful than us, 2 Peter chapter 11 says. And he's after you if you're saved. He's after me. He's after the world. He wants to devour them like a lion. And you have no power against him whatsoever. That's the problem. That's why we need his power. Y'all hearing this? You say, ah, you ask some of these people that in our church, they go to our church now, they start to say, I can take the devil. Go ask Jacob Floyd, he'll tell you all about it. Grass Summit, I know a man right now that said, I'm going to beat the devil across the, into Indiana line. And his, his life right now is an absolute disaster. Why? Because the, our enemy ain't playing around even if we think we are. And you, hey, you need his power because you have an enemy that wants to destroy you. I can't say it any nicer than that. He wants to destroy you. The power of Satan, Acts chapter 26, verse 18 says there's the power of Satan. Did you know power, Satan has power? That's why we need God's power. The direct opposite of the power of God. Ephesians 2.2 2 says he's the prince of the power of the air. The airwaves, I don't know what it is, but I know this. It's a power that I don't see, but I know it's there. The power of the wind. You don't see the wind. All you see is the direct result of it. And it can root up trees, and it can blow over houses. You say, that's pretty powerful, yeah. And Satan's the prince of the power of the air. It's there. You just can't see it. And when it comes upon you, it devastates you. Not only do we have problems because of our enemy, but B, our problem with the powers are in. Do you realize that the power of the grave, none of us will escape? You listen to me, teenager. You have no idea when you'll be your last day on earth. You may die tonight. That's sad to even say that. That's sad to even think of that. But some of you think you're going to live forever. Hey, some of you think you're going to live till tomorrow and God says, you fool. I may call your soul up right now. I've got plenty of time. I'll lay up store. I'll build more barns. I've got all this time in the world. Why would I want to listen to the voice of God? Because you and I may very well enter etern to eternity tonight. We have no power over the grave. You have no power over the time that you will end your life. You don't have that power. God said, I have it. Don't fear him that will kill the body. Rather, fear him that will kill the body and soul. It says in hell. 1 Corinthians 15, 26 says the last enemy is not conquered yet. That's death. We don't have control over death, or we would avoid it, would we not? If you can stop yourself from dying, wouldn't you do it? If you can bring yourself back to life, when you just when you die, just bring yourself back to life. But listen to me. Hey, listen to me. You guys think you're going to live forever. I did when I was a teenager. You will not live forever. You will all die as I will die. Our end, our enemy, our end. The problem with the power is we have an enemy that's more powerful. We have an end that's more powerful. Number uh, C, the enmity is more powerful. Romans chapter 8 verse 7 says the carnal mind is enmity of things against God. 
things about us we're useless against. I don't know about you, but I've had some thoughts I wish sure wouldn't pop up there. My mind is a terrible thing. If I were to dig into your mind, I said earlier that God is in your mind. You think, I'm hiding this from everybody. You're not hiding it from God. The moment we got saved, our brain didn't get saved. And so things pop up in our mind that we have no control or useless against. I can't conquer this God. It just keeps coming back. And i got to fight. Man, this just thought that uh, has come over me these past couple days. Man, I y- y- y'all get weary of, of, of fighting against sin? Now, some of you are like, no, because you don't fight against sin. You just do it. But I'm tired of fighting against it. I'm tired of summer times. I- I'm tired of having to turn my head because people won't wear clothes. I'm tired of it. I- 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 every summer, I'm like... Oh, man, I just wish women would just wear clothes. I just wish they would. I just put some clothes on. God made a bunch of it. Put them on. I, I don't understand it. It frustrates me because I need, I, I, got, there's, I just got to keep my eye. I, well, what is it? I'm tired of fighting against it. And this don't work going to be a day I won't have to, but I have to now. There's an enmity. And I need the power of God because I can't do it on my own. The mind. Romans 8, 7. The mouth. Proverbs 18.21 and James 3.6 says our mouth is a burning fire. That sometimes our mouth is absolutely crazy. You ever said anything that you regret later? Yeah. Double hands. Thank you, Hannah. You're the only other truthful person in here. Ever, uh, double hands! I've said something like, stupid. What is wrong with you? That's what they say to me. <laughs> I do! I'm like, what is wrong with you, Will? And I say, I don't know. And I go, yeah, you do. Remember? Your mouth. So my mind, my mouth, watch this, my motivations, my motives. Romans 7, 23 says that the things I want to do, I don't find myself doing. The things I want to do, I want to do right, God. I want to do things that please you, God. I want to do these things. And I don't find myself doing those things. What is it? My motivation's wrong. Y'all hearing this tonight? Why do I need the power of God? What's the problem? Because we got some powerful stuff coming against us. And you're not going to conquer it on your own. You're not going to go to a cave and meditate and get the things out of your mind. You're not going to get better friends and fix you. You're not going to get a better uh, cell phone and fix you. You're not going to get a better you. And listen, you need the power of God. I need the power of God. I need the power of God. We need his power to defeat the problems. You will not conquer without him. But with him, listen, the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him that conquers. <laughs> see, we're not just conquerors, we're more than conquerors. You see the potential of power, now the problems of power. Now watch this, number three, look at the promise of his power. The promise, his deliverance of his power to us. His deliverance of his power to us. Now, we look at the enemy, Colossians 1, 13 says that, oh my goodness, I ain't got enough time to preach this, but Proverbs 1, 13 says this, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. You see, our enemy, the power of darkness, God says this, he just completely, our enemy, he says, I've delivered you from that. Uh, our our set, our victory, our end, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57 says, the last, uh, i got to read it, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, the sting of death, uh, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. He said that, that right now we have the death, but we will get the victory because of the power of God through Jesus Christ. He said we're going to win the victory of our end. Our enemies defeated, our ends defeated, and then our enmity. Colossians 2 verse 14 says this. It uh, says, uh, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which is contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. You see, he has gave, gave us the victory through his power, but it's only through his power. That's why we're saying that that would have come down. It makes sense in Scripture. Our faith, the way we live our lives for Christ in some ways shouldn't make sense. Y'all understand? Listen, the way we should do things sometimes should not make sense to God. Because it's foolishness to the world. Why? Do do you ever think about this? I mean, maybe it's just me. Every Wednesday, you go to a place and this guy like spits all over the place and and he's screaming sometimes. What in the world am I doing? That doesn't make sense. Some things that God don't. We just do them because God does. And then there's power in them. <laughs> there's power in them, man! And that, that, that's why the, full, the world's like, what is this? There ain't no power in that. And you go, oh, yes, there is. Because some things just don't make sense. But it makes sense in Scripture. We're, we are to re- we're to rest and rely on the power of God, not on our own wisdom. 
Right there said, hey, look at the proof of his power. The proof of his power. Philippians 3.10 says, um, oh man, you're in, you're, oh, I was in Colossians. Philippians 3.10 says that I may know him, and it says, this one, the Bible says, and the power of his resurrection. But watch this. The proof that Jesus has power is that he raised himself from the dead. That he raised himself from the dead. He ain't got no power. You want to you bet? He does something that no one else can do. That's the proof of his power. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 3, you can look at this. The, uh, uh, Matthew 28 says, all power. So Jesus said, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. It's proof he must be where we go. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. If you're getting anything done for Jesus, he said, you, he has to be where you go. The proof of his power. John 10, 18 says, I, I don't... I don't no one takes my life from me. I lay it down that I might take it up. I have the power to take it up again. You can look the verses up. It's amazing. The proof of power. A. B. Look at the person of power. First Corinthians chapter one. Let's go. Turn. Turn there. First Corinthians chapter one. Real quick. First Corinthians one. Turn there. The person of power. I want you to understand this tonight. Listen. I'm talking about all this power, and I'm not talking about necessarily strength to being able to lift. But I'm telling you, Samson had some power from God. But did you know this? That there's a, a, a guy possessed with devils in the New Testament that broke the chains when they tried to chain him. The maniac of Gadara. They said they chained him and he would break the chains because Satan has power too. So this strength power, yes, there's some with God, but that's not the power we're talking about. We're talking about when you finally get a hold of God, God finally gets a hold of you, and there's some power in your life. And that's what they seen in the apostles. Listen to me. It wasn't the it, it, what wasn't the miracles that they did. It wasn't the raising up of people. That wasn't necessarily. It said when they seen people, they took notice because they'd been with Jesus. There was something about them. When I walked in that room, that living room today, man, I'm telling you what, I walked in there and I sat down. And God just gave me this for this night, yes. But I walked in there, I sat down, and the presence of God was so powerful in that place. I could have preached a revival, man. It could have come down. But I didn't need to preach a revival, man. I'm sitting there just talking and explaining. I wasn't, I wasn't, I was, I was just, I love you. And, and things, and just weeping. And you sit in the presence of God, the power of God. We need it. We're going to get anything done. But look at the person of power. The person of power is the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians one twenty four. look at it. It says, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God. You say, what's the power of God? If you ever want a definition for the power of God, it's Christ. Everything has to go through Him. You can't get to God without Jesus. You cannot. I'll say it, and I'll say it to the grave. Jesus is the only way to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. You can't go any other way. You can't go through baptism. Listen to me. You can't go through church membership. You can't go because your mom and daddy went to church. You can't, go, you can't go to heaven just by being a good person like some of us think we're going. Because you're not a good person. Just like me. It has to be through Christ. That's the person of power. God's power is unlimited, but we must yield the instrument by which his power is delivered. We must yield to the instrument by which his power is delivered. And that's through the person of Jesus Christ. It says, Hebrews seven sixteen. his endless life shows that it cannot be by anyone else. It has to come through Jesus. The person of power. Proof of his power. The person of power. Watch this. The preaching of power. The preaching of power. That the Bible says, in, uh, I think it's right here, verse, yeah, uh, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Now, that that would have come down, right? God, do something, come down. And God has chosen, listen to this, to manifest and give his power through the preaching of his word. You ever wonder why there's so much power at camp? Because you get four days of preaching. Y'all go on vacation? Am I in here? At the end of vacation, I, I don't have usually don't have spiritual revivals. At the end of at the end of that week, I'm, I'm usually like, Whoa, man, God is moving. This is so awesome. I want to just go out and charge hell with this crew again. Why? And you're preaching all week long. <laughs> Typically. But you get to camp, you hear it preached two times a day, or four days. What is that? Power of God. See, there's the preaching of power. D, there's the prayer of power. Now, this is amazing. I, I don't have time, but Genesis chapter 32, verse 28, and Hosea chapter 12, verse 3, it's the only time that you see this. 
it said that, listen, Jacob had power with God. It's the only time you see those phrases, and it's both talking about Jacob. And it's talking about the time where he got to wrestle with God. Not to, listen, it doesn't say power because of God. It doesn't say power by God. Hey, it says power with God. And what's that? It's when we get alone and we get that prayer closet. We pray. There is, we were talking about some of the day and people camp. I don't know if y'all want to go to camp. I don't know if to camp. I got a list, but I'm like, but I know this. I pray for Ava to go to camp. I've been praying every day. Guys, I, I'm, I'm an idiot. My wife would say amen if she didn't want to. I, 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 I can't do this stuff. But I know a God who can. And I'm praying, I'm begging God. And I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out because when you get a hold of prayer with God, you have power with God. And you want to change some things, get in prayer. But this is what I was talking this afternoon. I said, next time you go to prayer, this is going to happen. You're going to start talking to God, but God's going to deal with you about your sin. You can't go to God and say, God, I want, to, I want power with you and then have sin that you've never repented of. He's not going to say, ah. You just gotta get that stuff. That's gotta get out of your life. Yeah, you know that stuff you're doing right now? That's gotta, that's gotta get out. That's why some of us don't pray. But I'm telling you, when you're clear before God, God, I need you to move. I need you to save this person. I want my neighbor to get saved. I want my friends to get saved. I want people to go to camp. I want whatever. God, you got power with God. It's the only time you see that. I can't, I can't, I can't stick on that. The prayer of power, number uh, D or E, whatever this is. The, there, now you have the power of purpose. The power of purpose. This, remember, we're in a promise. The deliverance of his power to us. This is the power of purpose. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7 says that Paul said, I'm approved ministers. Their purpose in life was proved not by their greatness. Listen to me. Your purpose in life. Teenager, listen to me. Your purpose in life is not by your greatness. Yes, God made you who you are. Yes, God gave you uh, these, these gifts and all this. But listen, your greatness is not by those things, but how the power of God flowed through you. How it's going to flow through you. You, you gain power by submitting to his purpose. Once he gives you the purpose. Remember this old saying? He doesn't call the able. He enables the call. I can't do anything. Look at me. I'm lowly. What? What do I have to offer God? God said, you got nothing to offer me. But if you're a vessel, that will say, God, I want your power. There's a purpose in that. And when you finally get it, listen, you're going to go through life and you're going to get a bunch of purposes that are going to fail. Right now, you're probably living a life maybe. But there, there's a purpose. You think, this is what I'm here. Make money. And when you don't make money, then you're, you're going to be like, I'm a failure. Yeah, that's right. Because you've got to get a purpose from God and there's power in it. And the partaker of power. 2 Peter chapter number 1. Let me read those verses to you. I, like I said, there's so much in here. You guys will do the study later. But there's a partaker of power. And watch this. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Then verse number uh, 4 says this, Whereby we are given unto succeeding great precious promises, that by these you may might be partakers of the divine nature. This is the power of the Spirit of God, the divine nature that's in you. More of his power is being filled with him. So when you look at the partaker of power, you realize this, watch. When we get saved, we get the Spirit of God in us. Okay, come on now. When we get saved, we get the Spirit of God within us. I'm losing some of you. Yeah, I'm in. So within you dwells the mighty and awesome and powerful God if you're saved. That's why when he moves in, man, if something changes. That's the God that holds the water in the palm of his hands. That's the God that measures the, the universe with his span. That you can't teach him anything. You, he doesn't, there isn't anything he doesn't know. He's omnipresent. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. That same God is the within you. No, it's pretty cool. Not funny. It's pretty cool. 
And so what happens is this divine power and this divine nature that's within you, this is what happens. The more of him that is in you, the more of him that you give, the more of a partaker of his power flows out of you. You're filled with the word. When you're filled with the word, man, the power of God will come out of you. 2 Timothy 1.7 said, I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. See, God wants to give us power. He wants us to be a partaker of the power. Lastly, number four, I got to quit. The perfection of power. Go to 2 Corinthians and I will stop. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, real quick. The perfection of power. How do I get this power? And we looked at God that that would have spread the heavens. I don't know what God's going to do with this. I don't know. Next week, continues, I don't know yet. There's a couple more things that were on my mind that when God, that, that would have come down. When God comes down, he brings his power. But I'm telling you, if we got a bunch of power-filled people in this room, we got a bunch of teenagers who say, I'm going I'm to relinquish who I am. I'm gonna, I want the power of God to flow through me. But I'm telling you what, you talk about flipping the world upside down. You talk about flipping your families upside down. You talk about some power. Look at the perfection of power. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 12, verse 9, says this. He said unto me, this is Jesus talking to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, Jesus said, is made perfect in. I don't know if you know the story or not. Look at chapter 13, verse 4. Look at chapter 13, verse 4. Watch this. For though he was crucified through weakness, not Jesus, yet he liveth by the power of God. And I want you to grasp the whole test. The perfection of power in your life and mine is this. Paul, it said he had a thorn in his flesh he wanted to get rid of. God, I want you to get rid of this. And God said, I'm not getting rid of it because of your weakness. My power is made perfect. And what happens is this. Are y'all ready for this? We don't like weakness. We don't like, we don't like it. We don't like the fact that we can be weak and we can be vulnerable. We don't like that. We want to be powerful. But listen, we're not talking about our power. And the perfection of power is when we finally say, God, if you've got to send me, there's something to weaken me so that your power can flow out of me. That's the perfection of power. That's why you guys, 6th, 7th, 8th, 12th graders, that's why you guys have power with people. Because they look at you and they think, what are they going to do? The power of God flows out of you. And you're like, God's a part of me. That's why it's so effective. Because they think you is weak. And then when they see adults, the adults ought to be something. But when we submit ourselves, Paul, he had to submit himself and say, God, I don't know why you're doing this to me. And God, and Jesus said, because my strength, when you're weak, I'm strong. You and I must stop trying to do this thing on our own power. We can't do it on our own power. I can't win people to Christ on our own power. I can't bring people to camp on our own power. I can't, I can't bring people to church on my own power. I can't go into a living room and say, I, I want you to weep before God. I can't do that. But when I'll say, God, I'm weak and I need you because I need his power. That's what God says. That's what I'm talking about. It hurts to be weak. We say, it isn't what I expected to have his power. It's not something that I want to do to get his power. It's not something that I can do. God says, in weakness is when my power. Now listen, God gives us those. God, would he give us those who desire for him to come down. And that thou wouldest come down, and when he comes down, would you pray, God, I need your power. But wait, I know it comes to the cost and weakness of my son. I can't do it on my You can't do it on me. I got lost loved ones that need to say, I got, I, got, I got teenagers I pray for every day. I, I plead for your soul. But I can't make you get saved. There's not words that I can tell you. If I can convince you to get saved, someone can convince you to get out of it. But the power of God's present. 
Let's make the conditions right. And then when he comes down, say, God, I need you back. We get by the very close. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for the power of God. I trust in it and rely on it. In a moment of weakness, as we have an invitation where we invite people to be saved, we invite people to come to the foot of the cross, bow before the holy God of heaven. God, we desire tonight truth. God, we honor your temple. Oh, Father, we don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to have an expectation of what you will do. And God, I want to come broken before your holy friend. I need put back together the right way. And as you come, God, would you bring your power with us? There's teenagers in this room, oh Lord, that need your power. Trying to witness or try to do your will, they need your power. Tonight, there's someone in this room that's not saved. You are not born again. You are bound for a devil's hell. You say, Will, I don't know. I'd go to heaven if I died. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You don't know you'd go to heaven if you died. You don't know that right now. It's not me speaking to you. Listen, it's not me speaking to you. That inward thing that's going on in you, that's the God of heaven. That's the power of God. Don't say no to it. You say, Will, that's me. I don't know. I'd go to heaven if I die. Would you pray for me? Would anybody, nobody's looking around but me. Would anybody lift their hand up and say, Will, that's me. Would you pray for me? I don't know. I'd go to heaven if I died. Right now, I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't know that. Pray for me. Would anybody lift their hand up? Be brave enough to do that. You know, listen, anything else I said tonight, maybe you've listened to that. Anybody? Just let me pray for you. I won't call you out. I won't say your name, I promise. Would anybody say, Well, I don't know? Nathan's going to play. Let's just let's come back to the throne. God, you bless this invitation. We'll come and bow before the cross. We need your power. Regardless of whatever situation we are in, whatever avenue of life, we need your power. And you said you'd give it to us, and it's unlimited. So we thank you that we have access to it. You bless the invitation. We love you, Christ. Amen. Amen.